Episode 4, Roofing and Skylights. This is a giant swallowtail butterfly. They will eat any flowers nectar but will only lay their eggs on this plant. Roo. With these small yellow flowers next to this big rock by this hummingbird feeder. Her caterpillars all resemble bird droppings. What a great Halloween costume this would make. A giant swallowtail caterpillar. People would say you dressed as bird for Halloween and you'd be like actually, I'm not a bird dropping at all. I'm a caterpillar only dressed as bird shit. Virtual nesting dolls of disguises. Is that not, after all, what roofing really is? No? Then never mind the analogy. I guess I just wanted to talk about swallowtail caterpillars before talking about Tim and Erica's roofing. Let this confession serve as the official segue. And welcome to another episode of Ted T Bot T How. We've yet to be cancelled. On this, our fourth episode, we invite the viewer to join us as we document the installation of Tim and Erica's metal roofing and skylights. They chose snap together standing seam metal roofing. A sturdy and lightweight option. And a perfect choice for a tiny house on wheels. Sitting on two axles that are each rated to carry 7,000 pounds, this tiny house has got to keep trim. After installing the sub fascia and fascia with integrated vent way, apply a strip of window screen to keep out pests. Overlap the fascia with the underlayment. Always overlap low to high. Installing standing seam roofing is as straightforward a process as there can be. Start by fastening your drip edge before your ice and water shield. Then, starting at one end of your roof, shape and install your first roofing panel. Screw down the leading edge of each panel using specialty stainless steel screws and cover them by snapping on the next panel over the leading ridge of the previous panel and repeat. Easy. Cap off your gable ends and ridge line using prescribed techniques and tin snips. Add skylights to the mix and the complexity of your project more than triples, according to prestigious studies. Framing for your skylights is simple. The dimensions of the skylights will most often conform to standard framing specifications. Tim chose to frame their house using a 24 inch on center standard. And their skylights are 49 and a half inches square. Add an additional 2 by 4 frame to the top of your skylight framing. This extrusion is called the curb, represented here by a chimney. The skylight will slip over the curb once the curb is properly clad in a precise application of metal roofing elements working from low to high and overlapping each layer with subsequent elements. This process is known as shingling. Maybe. Make sure your build conforms to engineering standards sanctioned by the ASMR for your framing, your roofing and your installation techniques. Instructional tutorials abound. Unorthodox roofing design might force you to innovate bespoke panel sections and shingling techniques. Mistakes might cause you to do the same. Mistakes often garner consequences so be careful. We'll be back, when we return, the exciting conclusion of Tim and Erica's roofing and skylight installation process. Then, as always, we'll slice open the question bag. Arika and Tim will do their best to answer the tough questions from the ranks of our hugely impressive fan base. So do return. And now this. Are you tired of being told how to exist as a useful member of a broken and rapacious society? Would you rather be told what to do by a set of nine sacred crystals that each vibrate on their own unique frequency but cooperate with one another to communicate cosmic directives from a superior governing force whose name must never be uttered? Call us. Your brethren await. Don't you want to be where you belong? You are very important to us. 
Only with your help can we fulfill the will of the Universal Governor. You can do it. We love you very much. And we offer more amenities than nearly half the other fledgling religion clubs out there. So if you're a healthy and physically fit person between the ages of 18 and 23 with no pre-existing medical conditions and a healthy work ethic, call us. We're back. Before the commercial break Erica and Tim had completed the installation of their metal roofing elements. After fitting the curbs, skylight installation is quite straightforward. Tim and Erica's skylights demanded a two-person installation crew. One man on each end to lift the skylight over the curb and slide it over. One man then presses down on the skylight frame to ensure the integrated weather stripping engages the curb to create an airtight seal and the other fastens the skylight skirt to the curb using stainless steel screws. Look here as we display the finished product. Looks great. Right? That sound can only mean one thing. It's time to cut open the question bag and randomly choose three questions. Chance. Let's open envelope number one. And I read. Don't get me wrong. I love everything about your tiny house. But. Because your rules say I can only ask one question, I'll say my very favorite part of your house are those orange windows you made. How did you make those? Brian. 32. Of Missouri, USA. Thank you Brian for that great question. Those orange windows are in fact not orange. They are a color called natural cedar. But we don't want to get too deep into it because we're starting a two-part mini-series next week on Tim and Erica's DIY windows. So tune in then, Brian. What's inside envelope number two? Let's find out. And the letter reads... You guys seem like really good at like making things by yourself. Like how did you like make them orange windows that you like made? Mildred, 68, Bristol, England. Thank you Mildred for your lovely question. Again, since we'll soon be airing our three-part windows making expose, we'll reserve until then a detailed answer to your query. Suffice it to say Tim and Erica used white cedar. A hearty, lightweight choice. Let's reach into the question bag for a final grab. Hopefully something to do with roofing or skylights or even a more general question. Here's one. And I read. How did you make your tiny house windows? I'm talking about the orange ones. Dave, age 40, Ecuador. You've got to be kidding me. Another one about the stupid f***ing windows? Let's not do this. How are you doing this? Is this a prank? It can't just be coincidence, can it? If it is coincidence, then what can it mean? Is it another message from the cosmos only decipherable by members of my religion club? In any event we've run out of time for this week's episode of Ted T. Bod T. How so? Because of this cosmic prank. We won't be able to answer any questions. Let that be a lesson and join us next week for episode 5 as we embark upon the journey of documenting Tim and Erica's prospects for the future. Until then.